What is up YouTube? Welcome back to another Dark Frog Adventure. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the battery in a 2016 Honda Kia. Take two. What is up YouTube? Welcome back to another Dark Frog Adventure. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the battery in a 2016 Honda Accent. Uh, so my wife calls me up this morning and says her car won't start. So come down, took a look at it. And uh, yeah, it was pretty rough. The uh, battery is full of uh, Utah moss. <laughs> um, it's all corroded and everything. Uh, I'll put a picture in the video for you so you can see what it is. But uh, anyhow, today I'm going to show you how to replace the battery in a Hyundai. It's pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. Um, like I said, this channel, you're probably wondering, hey, you know, this is an adventure channel. How come you're doing a car video? Well, this started out to be my car channel. Uh, so I just basically took my car channel and adapted it into my the vlog channel. So that's why there's still some, you know, car oriented stuff on this channel. Uh, so I figured I'd probably get back to the roots a little bit, show you something real simple, really easy. Uh, winter's getting ready to hit for most of us, and you might run into, you know, battery issues like what was happening with this one today. So unfortunately, with this job here, you are going to have to pull out the air filter box. Uh, a lot of people say you don't have to. But I've changed enough batteries in these Hondas and Kias to know that, yeah, you don't have to pull off the air box to get the battery out. But once you go to try to put the battery back in, that's when you have to pull the air box out so you have enough room to get your bolt back in. I'll show you what I'm talking about. But first off, I wanted to say, you know, before you start your job, just make sure you take a picture of how everything goes. Just to be safe, especially if you're unsure or maybe this might be your first battery install most definitely take a picture then make sure your positive is on your positive make sure your negative cable is on your negative on the battery but uh, anyhow I got my wife's battery over here so anyhow got my wife's new battery right there got her old battery there I did try to clean the battery first like I said I'll put a photo of the how the uh, Utah moss was growing on my battery uh, well actually her battery but uh, Anyhow, like I said, I'll, I'll put the picture up there for you so you can see it. It was pretty bad. I tried to clean it first, but uh, due to the fact that it was so corroded and she's already kind of starting to have starting issues, it had already drained her battery. So I figured, you know, let's go out and get her a new battery uh, just so because winter's getting ready to hit. And yes, we could, uh, you know, put the old battery in there, salvage the old battery probably by charging it up or just jumping in and letting it charge up on itself. But Usually when that happens later on, once it starts getting really cold, like February, March area, you know, and start dropping down below zero, it will kill the battery again. I didn't want her to be stuck out in the middle of somewhere. Sorry, all the traffic. I didn't want her to be stuck out in the middle of nowhere without, you know, any kind of help. So might as well just get her a brand new battery. So the first thing we do is we're gonna unloosen that bolt right there. That goes to your hose clamp right here. And then, there's a few little clips right here. Pop that out of there. Another one right there. Pop that over. Now, here with the air box, it has prongs that sit in there like that. So, we're just going to go ahead and pull this box up. Since we got that loose, it all just comes out like that. Now you got your air filter box. It's okay to leave this all right here because, I mean, it'll be easier to put it all back in. It just gives us enough room to get that stupid bolt right there. That's the only thing. So. If you want to, you can take this out. Usually it's kind of hard to get your hand down in there to get it started. I think I could probably do that. I got enough room there. So yeah, you don't have to completely pull out your air box. You should have enough room. On my uh, Rio, I actually had to pull this out to get a little bit more room so I could get down inside there. But we're gonna go ahead and see how it does. Like I said, that battery's pretty hacked. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start unhooking that one, pull the battery out, and we'll put the new one in there and go from there. So this bolt down here, that's a 12 millimeter bolt. I already got it loosened up. Well, I thought I had it loosened up. So let's go ahead and... There it is. Get that bolt out of there. Now's a good time to check our air filter too. Make sure it either needs to be changed or cleaned or whatever the case may be. But uh, it's kind of a long little bolt there. Like I said, there's not a lot of room to work. It gives you a lot more room if you pull that out. But you don't have to if you don't want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and get back with you guys here in a second after I get this bolt out. All right, 
right now that I got that bolt loosened up, pull that out of there. You definitely don't want to lose this. This is your battery clamp down, this is your battery tie down, whatever you want to call it. So I'm just going to set it off over here by my air filter so I don't lose that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check this air filter real quick since we have it out. Yeah, it's kind of dirty. There's some bugs in there and stuff like that. So I'm just going to slap it out. It looks pretty clean. Yeah, that's that's pretty dirty. She needs a new air filter. I'll have to get her a new air filter. Um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and get her a K&N. Probably do something well. Now, there's a bunch of that crap down there. You want to get that out of there, too. Even though it's, the filter sits in there, you want to clean that out. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that out real quick. Okay, so now that I got that cleaned out of there, for, uh, we can go ahead and put the air filter back in there. It just sits in there like that. Um, the 2016 Rio air filter, the 2016 Kia Soul, well, Aspen's an 18, but um, most of the, in between the Kia Rio and the Honda Accent, it's really interchangeable, especially with the air filter. There's a good amount of parts that I'll switch out. Originally, the engines that were supposed to go into this car in particular were the same engines that went into the Honda Veloster. Uh, but uh, Honda decided against it because that's when they started uh, dumping money into the Veloster. So they decided just to go ahead and do a brand new car instead of taking an awesome turboed engine and putting in the Accent. Well, I always figured, I always wondered, you know, when a car company does something like that where they change their mind at the last second, they're probably going to phase out a car. Sure enough, Honda phased out the Accent. Uh, it's been probably about 10 years since they brought out the Veloster. Uh, and now uh, that 20 here, like getting a 24, uh, they phased out the Accent. At the beginning or middle part of 23 or beginning of 23, they phased out the Rio. Or no, vice versa, sorry. They, they phased out the Accent first and then it was the Rio. And I was like, well, I knew that they were probably going to phase out the Rio when they brought out the Stinger. They made a big, huge thing about the Stingers. They're like, oh, this is going to be an awesome car. It's going to revolutionize the sports industry. You know, a lot of stuff for racing and whatnot. And uh, once they started taking the bells and whistles away from our Rios and our accents to dump money into that, because Honda and Kia, they're sister companies and everything. But uh, once they started dumping money into this, uh, Stinger, I was like, I knew it was just a matter of time before they cut the Rio. Sure enough, cut the Rio, cut the accent. But we still have the Veloster. They cut some lines of that. They haven't cut it completely yet, but most of the engines from the earlier years of the Velocitors will fit the accent here. It'll fit the Rio, and it'll also fit the sole. So uh, that, that would be a pretty interesting swap to do into the Rio because the Rio is lighter than the Veloster. So all that horsepower that goes from the Veloster just with a straight engine swap into the Rio, that'd be fun. But uh, anyhow, let's go ahead and get back to the battery. Uh, like I said, I'm just going to go ahead and pull out the battery and everything. And uh, show you how to put the battery back in. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. So let's get into this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to move it forward a little bit so we can get some room to grab it. There's a handle right here. So let's go ahead and pull that out. Be careful with these old batteries because they are sloppy and they'll have battery acid. So what now I'm going to do is just clean up the box a little bit so the acid doesn't need it to the box. I'm going to clean up all this stuff right here. Alright, so now I got the battery holder going back in there. Put that on there real quick. I'm just going to get it set in there by hand. Okay. So I just put the battery holder in there. I'm not going to tighten it all the way down because I need to move the battery around a little bit uh, to get the terminals back on there and whatnot, or the cables back on the terminals. Um, so anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and get you guys set up so you can see how I'm going to do that. Okay, so I'm just putting that bolt on there as tight as I can by hand. That way I still can move it around and whatnot. So, you put the positive on first and then the negative. Like I 
said, you gotta move the battery around a little bit if you need to. Now that's all there. I'm gonna tighten those down. I'm gonna tighten that down. So what I'm doing now is I'm tightening down the negative. I make sure that's all the way on there first so it gets the best connection possible. And then tighten it down. Make sure that's not up. And make sure those are on there nice and tight. Those are nice and tight. So I'm just gonna go back through and double check and make sure everything's tightened down nice and tight. Uh, like I said, the battery terminals, those are 10 millimeters and the um, battery holder is a 12. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go back through and check to make sure everything's nice and tight. So let's check to see if it's nice and tight. So we're gonna see if everything's nice and tight. Make sure that's down there nice and tight. That's on there nice and tight. Yep, nice and tight, nice and tight. Battery's in there nice and tight. Okay, so I'm gonna double check that, make sure that is in there. Okay, so I'm gonna double check and make sure that 12 millimeter down there is nice and tight for the battery holder. That's in there nice and tight. All right, so time to go get the air box. Okay, like I was saying before, there's a couple little prongs down there. You can see them, they're under there. There's one there, another one there. And your air box has the prongs on it like that. So you wanna make sure those get in there. Okay, so those are in there now. You don't want one side up like that, otherwise you're not gonna be able to clamp it down. So let's make sure that's in there. And the other one's in there. So now we should be able to clamp this down. Alright. So we got those clamps back on there. Yep. Alright, next thing we need to do is tighten that back down. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down and we're gonna give the car a start and see what happens. Okay, with this one, you wanna make sure that you pull this up a little bit, because as you tighten it down, it's gonna rotate back down. And if you get it to rotate way too down far that way, you're not gonna be able to get into there to tighten it down. So I hold it, I bring it up like that. That would go on there, and then tighten that down. Nice and snug. You don't want to tighten it down super tight, otherwise you're going to break your plastic housing, and that won't be good. Okay, that's on there good. I just snugged it down nice and tight, because even though it'll keep going, it'll break that housing. You don't want to do that. Alright, so... Oh, there's a good sign. We got the door light on. And we're dinging, so we should start. And we started. Yep, there she goes. Yeah, like I said, my accent was pretty dead this morning. Wife calls me up and says, hey, my car's not starting. Gotta get a new battery. Oh, well. But that's how easy it is to put the battery in there. Um, it's taking me most of the day to do it today when it's supposed to have been a a uh, short quick video but I kept getting interrupted and all that other fun stuff but still ended up making the video still getting everything said and done still you know getting everything up and running um, another thing is I always double check make sure I don't leave any tools in here because the last thing you want to do is have like a tool set up in here and go flying down into your belt or something and you know jack that up or whatever try to clean this up as much as you possibly can if you clean your battery like I did this morning this morning I tried cleaning the battery because it was filthy and uh, I was like okay well clean the battery first see if that happens you know usually it's just a bad connection like I said I got in there nothing wouldn't start so I'm like okay well it's definitely the battery because it makes a quick 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 sound it's got a little bit of power but you could 
I mean, you can tell the difference between a battery and when it's something completely different. Um, but for the most part, like I said, just clean it up really good. I got that all cleaned up and I was like, well, it's still not starting. So I have the option of either charging the battery. Hopefully the battery holds up through the winter, which usually after they get that amount of moss on them, they don't hold up. You're better off just getting a new battery if you can afford it. Um, Cause I know batteries are getting pretty damn expensive now. Um, but uh, yeah, so we went and got a new battery. Uh, like I said, could have jumped it, but the problem would have happened later on down the road and then we would have been changing the battery in the middle of the winter time when it's freezing cold. And I didn't really want to do that. So, sorry for all the traffic noise out here. They have some road construction going on out there on the main road. So you're probably hearing that, that traffic coming through. But anyhow, like I said, thank you for watching the videos. You guys are so awesome. Um, if you're new to my channel, most definitely hit subscribe because uh, I'm going to probably bring some more car content, more of the accent, more of the real, probably even some of the Kissel um, when I got other stuff to do. I got to put some suspension on my soul, so I might do a video on that. Don't know yet. Maybe we'll just see what happens when that time comes. Uh, I'm getting a bull bar I'm going to put on the front of my Kia, so I might do a video on how to install the bull bar and adjust the bumper. I might even make custom bumpers for my Kia Soul too. I don't. I haven't decided yet, I'm not sure, but uh, we'll see what happens when that time comes. Um, but like I said before, thank you guys so much for watching the videos, it means so much to me. You guys are awesome, thank you for the subscribes, thank you for the likes, and uh, I will see you on the next adventure.